can get all of your ingredients online or at your local homebrew shop. We're gonna start off right with the pre-milled grain. Nice and easy. Then we're gonna move over to those hops. So pellets in this case. Yep, pelletized hops stay fresh longer. Aroma, yep. We've got our water, which is heating up right over here on our propane burner. Okay. And then we're going to, of course, need our yeast, which we've kept in the fridge to make sure it's nice and healthy. All right, so same ingredients and those big vats. I mean, I'm looking at different things here, but I recognize this, right? Propane burner with a big lobster pot. Cooler right here, you can get one of these, these two. And these two are just like those big stainless containers we have in there. This is where the fermentation is gonna happen. Gotcha. So the first step inside was mixing uh, grains and warm water. You got it, so we can do that right now. If you could grab that bucket right there, get the hot water ready for us. Dump it all right in before the grain. So how many gallons of water are you using? This is about three and a half gallons. And the temperature? About 152 degrees. Next step is to add our milled grain. We always want to add this to the water, never the other way around. Why is that? Right. We want to make sure we avoid any clumping. Oh, okay. Next, we want to give it a good stir. And we want to mix this all up real nice. It's all evenly distributed. So this mix right here, this is what you guys call the mash? That's correct. Once we let this rest for about an hour, we'll have wort. But first, we've got to cover it up, keep it warm. Okay. There you go. Perfect, now we wait. So while the mash has been resting for about an hour, we've got some more water in another pot up to 180 degrees. Okay. Gonna, you can lift that off for me. We're now gonna add our sparge water, which is gonna help us rinse all those sugars off the mash. This is about four gallons of water. Okay. Once this is full, we're gonna cover it and let it rest for about 10 more minutes. Thank you. Now we can drain our wort from our mash. And the wort is just the liquid, the mash or the grains that get left behind? That's correct, we wanna keep that all out of the boil kettle. Once we get all the wort in here, we can bring it to a boil, start adding our hops. So the coolers that I find at the store don't have a fancy valve like this. A Little bit different, we unscrewed the plastic valve that was on there, put on a ball valve, pipe fitting, and we got a little flex tube here. Oh, all right, so anyone could do that. Super simple, nice and cheap. Now that we have our wort at a boil, we're gonna boil this for about 60 minutes and start off by adding one ounce of hops right at the beginning. And the hops, this is where you add the flavor? Yes, yeah, so our initial hops that are gonna be boiled the longest are gonna add all of our bitterness. The hops we add in later are gonna add a lot of flavor and aroma. And each addition of hops is how much? About one ounce and we're using three different hops for this brew. Our next addition of hops will be when we have 15 minutes left in the boil. The final addition will be right at the end. Now that the flame is off, we want to cool this down as quickly as possible, so we're going to dunk it in a bucket of ice. We're going to want to let it sit in the ice until the wort has chilled to about 62 degrees. Once the wort is down to 62 degrees, give it some time to settle, and then we're gonna transfer it into our fermenter. We have to make sure that after the boil, everything this wort touches is sanitized. So that includes this bucket and this siphon right here. All right. We so can get that siphon going. Something you can buy off of the internet or at a brew store? Absolutely. We're gonna get our auto siphon going, trying to leave all of that sediment behind. Look at that, just flowing. How easy was that? Yeah, nice and simple. Now that all the wort is transferred, if you could hold that for me, yep. we can add our yeast. How much yeast? That's about 10 grams that we just put in. Okay. Got to seal it up right away with our special lid here and the fermentation lock. This thing right here? That's right. That's going to allow the CO2 to escape. Okay. We're going to give the yeast two weeks to break down those fermentable sugars, and then we'll have beer. Awesome. Mm -hmm.